What's up, you guys? Dr. Bartos here. Did you know that May is Melanoma Awareness Month? Of course not. I just found out myself. But anyways, let's talk about melanoma today. What can you do at home to see if your moles are changing? I'm glad you asked and I will teach you. I'm going to teach you the ABCs. A stands for asymmetry. When a mole is asymmetrical, that is bad. So let's say you have a round mole and you take, you draw a line through it, the two sides should be symmetrical with each other. They should be basically mirror images. When they are not, watch out. B, B, is that a B? That's a B. B stands for borders. The borders should be smooth. So the lesion doesn't have to be round. It can be uh, oval or square, if you're weird. Um, but they should be smooth. They should not have any kind of fingers growing out or branches or anything like that. Um, so smooth borders. C stands for color. The fewer the colors, the better. You usually have a beige and a brown, and that's fine. But if you have beige, brown, black, blue, purple, um, that can be a bad sign. So fewer colors are better. D stands for diameter. The diameter of your mole should be not more than the end of your pencil eraser. And this is a 0.6 centimeters, um, six millimeters. So the mole should be six millimeters or less. That's diameter and E Ooh, no manicure in quarantine. E stands for evolution. So if a mole is evolving, if it's changing, you've always had that mole and it looked a certain way, but now it looks different, it feels different, it changes colors, size, consistency, anything evolving, that is a bad sign. So to review, A is asymmetry, B is borders, C is color, D is diameter, and E is evolution. If you see any of those signs, you should, excuse me, <laughs> if you see any of those signs, you should come and have your moles checked out. In the meantime, you guys, please use the right protection and enjoy being outside. Use your hats, your sunscreen, clothing, look for shade, and don't play outside when it's the hottest. But most importantly, do enjoy your life. And I want to urge you to be a little bit more neurotic about your skincare like me, I think. As you may know, I am a cyclist and on a usual Saturday morning, I will ride my bike for about 60 miles from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And uh, people always ask me, how is my skin still so white? It's sunscreen. You just have to put it on, put on enough of it, reapply, and you will be just fine. When we occasionally stop at lights, I have a sun stick in my back pocket. I whip it out and I reapply on my face and neck, even on my fingers. Um, and that's how you stay protected, because I believe that you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't neglect your skin and then hate it when it goes to hell later on. But you can protect it, you can love it, and it will love you back. When I teach my patient about skin cancers, I basically group them all in three buckets, good ones, moderate ones and bad ones. And what is a good skin cancer? Basal cell carcinoma, for example, BCCs, where they are slow growing, they don't metastasize, and they rarely give you any long-term problems. Moderate type of skin cancers are so-so. And this is where I put the SCCs, the squamous cell carcinomas. These can invade the nerve and the tissues and they can metastasize to distant organs. So you wanna pay attention to these cancers. But most importantly, you never ever want to get a melanoma. And this is the worst type of skin cancer, especially if left unchecked. This is the one that grows faster, that can metastasize and can go to different organs and even threaten your life. Melanomas are rare, but for this year, 2020, the American Cancer Society estimates that approximately 100,000 people will be diagnosed with a new melanoma. Almost 7,000 will die, 40% of them being men and 20% women. Another interesting and kind of alarming fact is that the melanoma incidence is increasing, especially in young people. Now, before I scare you away, 
I want you to know that melanoma is easily diagnosed and cured, especially if caught in the early stages. If you are in the hands of an experienced dermatologist, you have nothing to worry about as long as you get your skin checked regularly. Now, do you know the risk factors for melanoma? You can probably guess them, but I will tell you. The first most important risk factor is being white. And as you know, we don't have enough pigment, enough melanin in our skin to protect us from the UV radiation. So if you're blonde, blue-eyed, red-haired, maybe of a Northern European descent, um, Irish maybe, uh, you are more likely to get a melanoma. And just for reference, whites are about 20 times more likely to get a melanoma than African Americans. One in about 38 white people will have a melanoma in their lifetime, as opposed to Hispanics, in which only one in 167 will get one. And contrast that with the blacks, where only about one in a thousand get a melanoma. So they are much better protected. The second most important thing is ultraviolet radiation. This radiation can come from the sun. It can come from tanning beds, which I know you never use. It can also come from x-ray machines or from any other sources of radiation. And interestingly, this is not the slow buildup of cumulative radiation that develops over a lifetime, but rather blistering sunburns. So even one blistering sunburn back in your childhood that you may have had growing up predisposes you to getting melanomas. So guys, a small parenthesis here, with everything that we know nowadays, I can't believe that people are still getting blistering sunburns. It just blows my mind. The third risk factor that I want to mention is your gender. So men are more likely to get a melanoma for reasons that we don't understand. I'm sorry, you guys. It turns out that having that Y chromosome sometimes works against you. The fourth risk factor for melanoma is having a lot of freckles and moles. Now, I'm not talking about having a few moles, which we all do have, I'm not sure if you can see them, but having hundreds of moles, and especially if those moles are changing. So it's very important that you get to know your moles and photograph them and keep track of them, whether you do it yourself or a family member. I recommend that you routinely stand in front of a tall, full-size body mirror and with another mirror in your hand, you basically look at all the moles. There are apps that you can use to photograph your moles, um, or if you want to come in, we can do it professionally for you. What we do is we use our microscopes, we digitize your picture and we save it. And when you come back in three to six months, we do the same and we compare the moles to see if there are any subtle changes that you may not perceive with your naked eye. So as Dr. Robinovitz, my fellowship director used to say, is that some people have family albums, some people have mole albums, and you may have to be just one of them where you have to keep track of your moles. The fifth risk factor is location, where you live. And as you can guess, if you're white and you live in Arizona, in Hawaii, in Australia, you're more likely to get a skin cancer. And last but not least is a history whether a family history or a personal history. If anybody in your family had a melanoma or if you yourself had a melanoma. If you did, it's very important that you get checked every three months for the first couple of years uh, because it is within this period of time that you're more likely to get another one and you don't want that. Now, how are melanomas diagnosed and how are you supposed to know when a mole is changing? We as dermatologists train for three years to be able to tell the good from the bad, um, but for you it may be a little bit more difficult. When you look at your body, basically you want to look for the ugly duckling sign. And what is that? Is when one mole stands out more than the others. If most of your moles have a certain shape and color and geometry, and one of them stands out, that is what we call the ugly duckling sign. So that's something to keep an eye on. In addition to using our eye for diagnosis, we also use our dermatoscopes. And these are basically little uh, microscopes that we use to look at every lesion. And this allows us to look under the skin to see what is the architecture and organization of your lesion. And using this device, we can tell with great confidence whether a mole is benign or malignant. Now, 
the opinions are very split on the issue and many people say that your naked eye is good enough and you don't need a instrument to aid your diagnosis. But I object to that very strongly. Uh, this is like telling a cardiologist to listen to your heart by putting his ear to your chest. Now, are they going to hear something and know maybe what's going on? Yes, but is it as good as using a stethoscope in a ultrasound machine? Obviously not. Or it's like telling a Navy SEAL to go ahead and attack without using his uh, night vision. Um, he will be just a little bit more blind than he should be. Now, I am the first to admit that I may be biased because in addition to my residency training, I spent a year doing a fellowship in melanoma and pigmented lesion dermoscopy, where we spent every waking hour looking at every lesion with this microscope. A few centers also have confocal microscopes. And these are basically lasers that allow us once again to look under the skin to see the architecture and the organization of your lesion. And we can tell again with great accuracy if a lesion is benign or malignant. And once again, people say, why spend all that time diagnosing a lesion when you can just cut it out, send it to the lab, and you'll have a confirmation whether this is benign or malignant. But I object to that as well, um, for obvious reasons. Uh, say you're a young woman with a couple of moles on her face, or even on your chest and arms and back, who wants to have multiple surgeries? Many times the scars are worse than the mole, and not to mention that it involves cost, risk of bleeding, infections, um, and things like that. So yes, when we use our instruments properly, we take fewer biopsies and fewer surgeries, and we do lose money. But I think that that's what the patient needs. I think that that's the right thing to do. So I will always look out for you guys and do the right thing. In the meantime, you guys, stay healthy and safe, and remember your sunscreen. I love you.